afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are going to be building a scale model of a stage today, a proscenium stage, with a full fly house. It's going to be in quarter inch scale, and uh, we're going to be using a number of materials and a number of techniques, all of which I'll take you through step by step. And uh, at the end of this uh, two video series of how to build a uh, stage model, you will have a stage that you can design a set for. Um, and, uh, and then you can test lighting and do all sorts of things for um, a, a scale model of the production. So uh, things that you're going to need today. One, um, you're going to need your T-square. You are going to need a cork back ruler. You are going to need your architectural scale rule. And again, we're going to be working in quarter inch scale. You're going to need some glue. This isn't going to be till later on, but uh, let's have it handy anyway. Uh, you're going to need an X-Acto blade uh, or a box cutter, something with a sharp knife. Um, as always, with your uh, blades, make sure that you are changing the blade out often. Um, you want it to stay sharp, um, particularly since we're going to be using something called foam core today, which has a plastic core in it. And that plastic dulls the blade faster than simply cardboard or, or paper would. So make sure that you've got extra blades for whatever blade it is that you're using. We've got a pencil, a pencil sharpener, and then I've got the list of um, all of our pieces that we're going to be cutting. cutting. You also are going to be using, uh, I'm going to grab the small piece first. You're using foam core. Uh, I'm using black foam core, uh, and I would highly recommend you do that as well, um, because, frankly, um, theaters are black, uh, and, and there's good reason for that. Um, black allows you to highlight only the things that we want to see uh, once you put the design in, in place. So, um, foam core, much like cardboard, has a paper outside on both sides, but then in the center... And here you can see it with the light pretty pretty well. Um, is this plastic foam? This is the stuff that um, makes it really really easy to dull your blade. The plastic is is pretty rough on blades, so um, you know uh, just make sure that you're taking good care of your equipment, um, and uh, you'll be good to go. So. Um, the first step in any of these projects is to take the material you're using and cut it down into usable sizes. Um, if you look through all of these plans, uh, our base plate is a 60 foot by 35 foot um, rectangle. Um, and that's in quarter inch scale, of course, right? And um, so it's a good size theater. Um, the state, the playing space ultimately is 25 feet deep and 60 feet wide, so it's a shallow but wide theater. Um, and uh, and so you've got your base plates, you've got your stage deck, right? And you see that there's going to be some notching uh, down here. Um, that notching we're going to get to later. The first thing to do is cut out all the major pieces, uh, and then you can shape them. You've got your proscenium wall with the proscenium opening cut out of it. Oh, you don't need to see that. Uh, you've got your house walls. You've got your uh, your stage supports. And then, where are you? Here, you've got your um, side walls. So we're I'm going to be cutting a number of pieces today. We're going to end with all of those pieces complete in the first video. But the first step is to take this ginormous piece of foam core and cut it into a useful size. Now, we know that the overall size of the theater is 60 feet in quarter inch scale. So the first thing we're going to want to do is cut off a bunch of this in a 60 foot hunk. And that way we've got something we can work with. Okay, so that's the first thing we do. So uh, what you wanna do is you wanna clear your space, keeping things in a place that uh, is reachable. Um, 
the worst thing to have to do is to continuously have to walk across your own room to try and find the things that you need. Um, oh lord. See, it's not small. So I'm going to move my stool, actually. And I'm going to do this. Like so. So what you're seeing now is that I'm going to measure up 60 feet in quarter inch scale along either edge. On the edge that I've chosen, the corner is crunched so that there's uh, a bit of folding at the corner. We're going to use that corner for the base plate um, and take that into account when we're measuring our 60 feet. So I'm measuring just on the inside of where the crunch starts. And at this point, you want to grab your T-square. What the T-square will allow you to do, go on to here, line up with your mark, And now I've got a nice line, 60, 60 feet in at quarter inch scale. So before I cut this thing, I'm going to put this along the edge here so that I know that I won't cut the table. Again, take care of your stuff, folks. Uh, cork back ruler right up against our line. And then you're going to take your cover off your blade. Make sure that that line is nice and good. Now, just like last time when we did the cardboard box, you're going to do a number of passes. You want those passes to be nice and long. If you do a k -k 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 sort of pass, you're going to get a really, really rough edge. So you want nice, long passes. So I'm going to put the blade right up against the ruler, and I'm going to make a nice long pass. There's one. There's two. So that first one's like a scoring pass. The second pass goes through the foam. The third pass is really going to pick up anything that you haven't picked up yet. And then... I'm going to switch over to here, making sure that my cut is on... Uh, is on the cutting pad, right? And then I complete the cut from the other side. One pass scoring, two pass through foam. That already cut through, but I'll do my third pass anyway. Okay? So I'm gonna cover this back up again. I'm gonna put my ruler over here. I'm gonna remove this, which I don't, I, I'll use later. Um, we're going to use this as a starting point, right? So now I have this 60 foot depth here, right? And then I've got a bunch of space to cut other things out. One of the things to note is that uh, this was the crunched edge, right? And so that's a factory edge. That cut right there is my cut. And it's just as smooth those long, long pulls of the knife and having a sharp blade make all the difference in keeping those lines smooth. So that's really, really important to remember. So now what we want to do is we want to just start, you know? Let's just get the ball rolling here. And um, that means you want to visit your, uh, your, your, your cut list. Now, my cut list starts, and I always like starting uh, building things from the ground up, right? So the first thing I'm going to cut is the base plate. The base plate is um, the, the surface upon which the entire model is going to sit. It is 60 feet wide, 35 feet deep, all in quarter-inch scale. So that's the first thing that we're going to cut. Now... There's always going to be a question of whether or not you can trust factory edges. Um, the, the truth of the, making a mess. The truth of the matter is, is that um, starting at a corner, you kind of, you, 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 you gotta, you gotta trust somebody out there. You know what I'm saying? So you might as well trust this. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to choose 
the side that's got the two nicest corn. Uh, actually, for the base plate, I'm going to use the side that's got the crunched corner. Um, that way, I'm not wasting material, and I know that I can place that crunch wherever I need to in a way that isn't going to harm the model. So, so the first thing is that I know that this distance here is 60 feet. So all I have to do at this point is find quarter inch scale again. There she is. And line the zero up here at the very, very edge. And here, actually, I'm going to do this so that you can see it. So we want 35, right? So I am going to line the 35 up here. Right? And then I'm going to mark the zero. And now, as always, you're going to mark one side, mark the other, draw the line with the T-square. The T-square helps you keep a right angle. So if there's any mistake at all, you see now I'm double checking a measurement. If there's any mistake at all, that T-square helps you find it and make whatever adjustments need to be made. Now, before I cut this off, we're about to cut a bunch of pieces. I want to stay organized. Staying organized is going to keep the process moving forward in an efficient way and in a way that allows me to, uh, to, to not get things confused as I go. So I'm going to choose a corner, and I'm just going to write base plate. Now, I'm not taking a whole bunch of space. Um, I'm just taking up what I need to describe what it is. Now that that's done, just as before, you're going to put your corkback ruler down, line it up with the line you've already made, hold the blade carefully against the material, and cut using three careful passes until you're all the way through. And that's done. That's what you get for a sharp having a sharp blade, is that you're going to get the passes coming real fast, which is great. So... Now I will set this aside, and we move on to our next piece. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do all the big pieces first. Why? Because then I can simply push through all the big pieces, and so that's the back wall, the front wall, the, the proscenium wall, the, um, the, the stage deck. So the second piece... going to be the back wall. Again, 60 feet wide. This time it's 33 feet tall, okay? Our proscenium opening um, is going to be, where are you, you little thingamajigger? Our proscenium opening is 20 feet tall, right? Um, and that's, that's Fairly short, but yeah, we're good. Um, so our overall height here is going to be 33. Okay, so um, it's 60 feet wide, 33 feet. So the next step is eighth inch, a quarter inch scale, so that you can see. So once again, we're going to measure one side, 33 feet. Make the mark. Then we're going to switch to the other side, measure 33 feet, make the mark, and grab your T-square, draw the line across the piece, giving yourself a nice, solid line. And once you do that, you can grab your blade, label it, yeah, label it. Grab your blade, grab your corkback ruler, hold that down nice and firm. The firmer you hold down that cork. Uh, back ruler, the, the more uh, help it will give you. And you make those nice long three pass cuts. Now, oh, haha. Now, the proscenium wall is going to be the same as the back wall. They're going to mirror each other, right? The only difference is that later on, when we're working with the proscenium wall, we're going to have to cut the opening out. So the next step will be to do the exact same, uh, cut out the exact same size piece as the back wall. I think you're probably starting to see a pattern now. So we measure up that 33, make the mark, up the 33, make the mark, connect the dots with the T-square, 
There you go. I tried to do it in the air. It's inaccurate, so you'll see I put it down and actually do it accurately. Put it against the ground. Use your cork back ruler after labeling. Put that down. Three nice strong passes, and you've got your proscenium wall complete. Yep. Proscenium wall. And put it aside. Now, we've got this cutoff piece, right? And, um... This pretty much uh, is going to be used for uh, stage supports uh, and house walls. Um, and what, what that means is that, you know, we've gone through the first big cut at 60 feet. So that 60 feet cut that we did at the beginning, you're going to have to do two passes of out of one of these sheets. Um, I've already done that out of another sheet, so I already have one pre-cut. So I'm going to skip over that step and just keep trucking along. Voila, like magic, the magic of video. Now, a lot of these have uh, the, the stickers that come along. And you can pretty successfully remove them. Takes a second, just takes a little time, world of difference. So next, on the big pieces, we've done the proscenium, we've done the back wall. Next is the stage deck. Now, you're going to notice it's only 58 feet wide, right? Because you have the thickness of the side walls to contend with. Um, it is a 24, 25 foot deep piece, and then it's got this notch, right? Where there's a 44 foot um, notch in it. We're going to cut out right now 58 feet by 25. We're just doing the overall size. That way we can go back later and, and do the refined cut. Now you're gonna to have to make more cuts on this. Um, in order to make your life easy, I'm gonna do the 25 foot cut first so that right now I'm working with a 60 foot piece, right? So I'm gonna cut out the depth and then I'll go back and trim to 58. So here we go, we're measuring back from that corner. 25 feet in quarter inch scale, we make our mark. We do the exact same thing on the opposite side. At this moment, cutting out these big pieces means that you get to do the exact same thing over and over again. And so you don't have to expend any brain power in all of the specialty cuts. You can get into a rhythm of cutting the bigger pieces. That's one of the reasons why we cut the big pieces uh, all at once. The other is to help save material, which I'll talk about more later. So we've made our pencil line, we've labeled it, we're taking our cork back ruler, and we are now going to take our blade and do those three lovely, lovely passes that are gonna cut out our stage deck. Okay, I'm gonna put this aside for right now because what we need to do now is we need to cut this 60 foot wide piece, 25 foot deep piece, to 58. Now where does the 58 come from? The 58 comes from the thickness of the foam core. So, the foam core is actually about 9 inches in quarter inch scale. Okay, So by doing um, a foot, we're actually cutting off a little too much. And that might give us a little bit of an edge um, at the end. But by keeping it at nice round numbers, um, you're, you're buying yourself the ability to have a little consistency and a little play um, in a model that, um, that, uh, that, that might need it. Um, you know, the, the folks who, who, who make really professional models won't give them themselves that slob. We're going to. Um, and uh, it's, it's a kindness to ourselves as beginners, okay? So um, we're cutting this down to uh, 58 feet. So I've got the stage deck thing there, so I know I'm not gonna cut it off this edge. So here we go. Find the quarter inch. And then what you do is you find 58, put that at the edge. And surprise, surprise, mark one side at 58, second side at 58 line them up, and here we go, and uh-oh. 
Well, something went wrong there. See, the T-square helps. The T-square helps you find the things that you are doing wrong. Yeah, see, that was just not right at all. That was just plain old wrong. And now that I've made that adjustment, I can take my T-square and line up those two marks, and it'll be accurate. And look at that. It lines right up. Amazing what a little self-adjustment does. One of the things to note is that if you are moving through this hurrying, you won't catch those mistakes. And then you end up with like wonky wonky cut. Um, take your time. Mistakes are going to be made. If you're moving slowly, you can catch them. Um, and I don't mean slow like mud. I mean slow like be methodical, take a breath, take a look, right? It just makes it easy, easier on yourself to... Um, to pace in a way that allows you to catch um, any of the discrepancies that come up naturally in, in a building process. So then we want to line that up with a pencil line. And there is our stage deck. Voila. Great, and we keep going, right? There's more overall cuts to, to be cutting out. Our next ones are going to be the side pieces. Now you're going to notice that ultimately we're going to be cutting a hole in the side. That's so you can reach your hand in and adjust the set in, in ways more than just dropping down from the top, particularly since we're doing a fly loft and it might be covered with things. So the overall size that we're cutting out here is 24 foot by 32 foot. Um, the 32 foot is slightly less than 33 feet, which is the height of the proscenium in the back wall. That's so you have a ridge that helps catch any little dowels that you're using for your um, for your line sets. So, scale rule. What did I say? I said 24 by 32. Whew, Charlie. You got to be careful. And so here we go. We are going to cut the 32 foot depth out of that uh, 60 foot wide chunk of uh, foam core. So we make our two marks, 32 deep on either side. We take the T-square, we connect them as always. We make sure that it's all lined up. We draw our line. My gosh, I'm taking my time up. Oh, somebody made a mistake. So we're double checking it. And now that that is done, yeah, there we go. Take the T-square, draw that line, and here we are ready for the next step. Just do one of the reasons to um, cut that 32, to, to measure the 32 inches first, 32 times 2 is 64. 64 is not 60, right? Um, and that means that we wouldn't be able to get, we have to make two side walls. There are two sides. So we wouldn't be able to make two of them out of one cut. So I'm trying to save as much material as possible so that I can use material later on. You know, uh, you know th this stuff isn't cheap. Um, it's uh, material that uses natural resources, all, all that sort of stuff. There are a thousand reasons to be conscious of the amount of material you're using. So, uh, here we go. So now we're going to pick up the pace a little bit. We're going to cut out these two 32 by 24 uh, foot rectangles that are going to be our side walls. And if you take a careful look, I'm labeling them as I go. I'm measuring them in all the same ways we have up to this point. By this time, you should feel fairly practiced at it. Great. Now we start getting into some of the smaller pieces, right? And we've got um, a few pieces of scrap that we had here, right? And uh, that's never a bad thing. So, So 
See, it's good to have drawings in a list. Uh, it helps keep you organized, helps keep you honest. Um, I have a terrible time apparently turning paper. So the next two things that we're going to be doing are the house walls and the understage supports. We only need a few of those, um, and you're not going to be putting a huge amount of weight on things, but, you know, if you're doing a scale model of something and you decide to use a rock to represent a larger boulder, you don't want the stage to collapse on that. So you want something in there. So we need four supports and we need two house walls. We're gonna start with the house walls. The house walls are nine foot by 33 foot. So um, I'm not gonna use that. That's terribly not square. Um, so it's easy to ask why we need house walls. House walls are there to help us with the idea of sight lines within our theater. And that being the um, idea that all theaters are supposed to have an audience. What can the audience see from the house and what can't they? Without the house walls, you don't really get that effect. And so we want to take the time at least to give the indication of where those walls are, which is why they're also so thin. Only nine feet wide is not really going to be an accurate representation of your theater house, but it works for our purpose. And as you can see, I've been doing this in exactly the same way we've done almost every other thing that we have cut today. You measure the two outsides, you connect it with the T-square, you take your corkback ruler, and there you go. In this particular case, I've measured both of them on the same piece at the same time, which means that I can cut them out uh, consecutively. Um, now that we're getting into those smaller pieces, it's easier to manipulate the material to be able to do that sort of thing, which is really helpful. Great. Now what we're looking for are our understage supports. Understage supports. Now these we want to have it be a bit more accurate because what we don't want to do is have the stage sink or bow, right? So we know that um, we know a couple of things. One, I want a three foot deck, right? So the deck is going to be three feet off the, the uh, base plate. We also know that the foam core is going to be nine inches in quarter inch scale. What that means is that you are going to be cutting, oh, that's funny. I teach theater, not math, I'm just kidding. So what that means is that you're gonna to need to cut a piece that is 24 foot by two foot three, okay? 24 by two foot three. So here I go, and I'm going to cut the 24 foot measurement first making the measurement exactly the same way we always have with the zero on the edge and then marking the 24, make the cross line with the T square. What I'm gonna do next is I am going to uh, cut off the 24 foot end um, and get ready to measure all of the things out of the same piece. One of the other dangers of using a blade like this is that you can hold it at an angle, an angled piece, Make sure that you're trying to hold it as vertical as possible. Next. Now this is the most exact cut of the entire uh, stage model. What you're going to be doing is you're going to be marking the three inch mark and the two foot mark several times so that we have four equally sized understage supports. Again, letting them be equal is what's going to make the entire stage flat. Now, one of the nice things about using a scale rule is that you don't have to do the math of changing it in your head. You know, you're know, you not looking at this and saying, oh, a quarter inch in, in, in a quarter, uh, 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 three inches in quarter inch scale equals this, no, da, da, da. you don't have to do any of that. You're just thinking in, the, in, the, in feet and inches. And so I'll finish measuring up these marks, moving from the two foot to the three foot, manipulating the material to do what I need to do. And then I scribe each of the lines and uh, I give myself a full cut list to work with. At this point, we're a half an hour in, so we wanna make sure that we're being accurate, holding the knife well, holding the ruler well, taking deep breaths between edge and everything, and keep on labeling. There are three, no, there are four pieces 
that need to have some kind of an adjustment um, or special cut that needs to be done. One of them is a COVID cut. Um, and uh, we're going to continue that after a short, after I take a break, I'm taking a break. Take breaks, ladies and gentlemen. If you sit too long at a mat cutting um, things, your back will hurt, your focus is going to go, you're not going to pay attention the way you need to pay attention. So make sure that you're taking care of yourself, make sure that you're taking breaks, make sure that when you sit down, you know that you don't have to worry about other things um, because those are exactly the things that will lead you to make some mistakes. So 15 minute break or lunch break or whatever break it is you need. Go do it now.